G'day guys, Shane McGrath here from the McGrath Music Academy. In this lesson, we're going to talk about basic open guitar chords. Now, when we talk open chords, we're talking about chords that use the open strings on the guitar. So by now, you should know each string and its name from the top to the bottom or from the bottom to the top. So the main thing about playing a chord is we need to make sure that we're holding our neck correctly. When we're gripping the guitar with our left hand, we need to ensure our thumb is curved like this and it's on the back of the neck, on the center preferably. You'll see that some guitarists do in fact have their thumb over the top of the neck. That serves for a different purpose and I'll talk about that in later content. For now, what I really want you guys to focus on is placing that thumb on the back or the center of the neck. So the first chord we're going to look at is an E minor chord. Now this was covered in my last lesson, but we're going to look at some of these chords in more depth and we're going to learn how to strum these chords with certain strumming patterns. On the screen you'll see the E minor chord chart. The diagram represents the guitar standing upright with the frets being the horizontal lines and the strings being the vertical lines going downwards. You'll also see either a white line or a black line which represents the nut on most guitar charts. So for the E minor chord, let's start by looking at our left hand. We need to understand what the numbers are with the circles on the guitar chart itself. Number one with a circle around it represents our index finger. Number two with a circle around it represents our middle finger. Number three with a circle around it represents our ring finger. And number four represents our pinky. Now you'll see on the E minor one and two. For E minor we're going to use our index finger and our middle finger and place them just behind our second fret on the fifth string and the fourth string. So our index finger is on the fifth string and our middle finger is on the fourth string or the D string. Now you can actually reverse your fingers. That is okay. But the preferable way to place your fingers is using your index finger on the fifth string and your middle finger on the fourth string. Now this open chord requires us to play all of the strings. So let's try it. Once you've tried that, I'd like you to just check each individual string with your picking hand. I want you to arpeggiate the chord with your right hand. So that means plucking each string individually and have a listen to the sound you produce. Now most beginners will find that the fourth string and the third string probably don't ring out clear. This is because you haven't got your fingers standing upright nice and tall. So we really need to focus on making our fingers stand up nice and tall and our knuckles are bent and our fingers are fretting just behind the fret itself. So try that, please try and arpeggiate your chord just to check you've got all your strings required ringing out nice and clear. So let's try that E minor again, let's arpeggiate it. Beautiful. Our next chord we're going to look at is the G chord. The G chord requires us to use our middle finger, our index finger and our ring finger. So we need to place our middle finger on the third fret on our top string or our sixth string and make sure it is just behind that third fret. Our index finger is placed on the second fret on the fifth string and our ring finger is all the way down on our first string at the third fret. Now this open chord also requires us to strum all the strings. So go ahead and strum. And again, I want you guys to practice arpeggiating the chord. Alright, 
Our next chord, this is probably one of the more challenging chords. It actually requires us to have a finger on separate frets. So the C chord is our next chord and it requires us to use our index finger, our middle finger and our ring finger and each of those fingers are actually going to be on separate frets which requires us to flex our hand a little bit. So this is where our technique of having our thumb on the back of the middle of the neck is super important. So if you see here on my guitar, the C chord, we have our ring finger on the third fret of the fifth string. We have our middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string and our index finger is on the first fret of the second string. You must make sure that your fingers are standing up nice and tall and you're directly behind the frets. This open chord requires us to avoid the top string. On the chord chart, you'll see there's an X for the sixth string. This means we avoid that string. So we're actually going to start with our strumming hand from the fifth string down, like this. Again, I want you guys to practice arpeggiating the chord from the root note downwards. Brilliant. So we've got E minor, G chord, C chord, and the final chord that I'm going to give you guys is a D chord. Now the D chord, I kind of like to visualize all these patterns as shapes, and this one kind of has a triangle look about it. Now, it's probably one of the easier chords because your fingers are all nice and close together. You are using, again, your index finger, your middle finger, and your ring finger. And we're going to be playing on our high strings. Now, when I say high, I'm talking about pitch. So I'm talking about my first string, second string, and third string. So my middle finger is going to be placed on the second fret of my first string, or my little E string. My index finger is going to be placed on the third string or the G string on the second fret. And my ring finger is going to be placed on the second string, B string, at the third fret. Now this chord requires us to avoid the top two strings. So we need to strum from the fourth string down. There it is. Again, arpeggiate the chord. Before we get into our strumming patterns, we need to look at our relationships of our chords. I like to look at the similar fingering per chord, our chord progression being G, E minor, C, then D. Now if we look at G, we can see that between G and E minor, the next chord, there's a common pivot point. That pivot point is our index finger on the second fret of the fifth string. So you want to make sure your transition from G to E minor means that your index finger stays where it is. It might shuffle back a little bit, but as long as you're aware of that, that's going to help you complete a smooth transition to the next chord. So looking at G to E minor, without even playing the guitar with your right hand, just observe my left hand. So from G to E minor. From G to E minor. This is something I want you guys to practice as well, so you're able to observe the pivot point of each chord. If we look at E minor to C chord, the pivot point is our middle finger. My middle finger doesn't move. This allows for a smooth transition. So let's look at G to E minor, G to E minor, E minor to C. Now C to D is a hard transition. The finger that I like to move first is my middle finger because it's on the same fret as the D chord from C to D. So the transition would be C to D. What also helps is visualizing that shape on your fretboard. The last piece of advice with transitions and chord transitions is don't move your fingers one finger at a time. 
So if you go to a G chord, don't do this. You need to visualize the shape on the fretboard and all the fingers must fret at equal time, like this. So from G to E minor, we have that pivot point, which makes it super handy. From E minor to C, we have that pivot point with our middle finger. Now C to D, this is where you need to visualize that shape. So we want to go from C to D. C to D. Once you have those transitions nice and smooth and you've memorized your shapes, then you can move on to implementing your right hand. So the next part we're going to work on is strumming patterns. And in these strumming patterns, we're going to start very basic. We're going to start with a whole note strum first. Then we're going to work on our crotchets or our quarter note strums. And then we're going to introduce some crotchet and quaver patterns. So our crotchet and quaver patterns is when we use our right hand to do down strokes and up strokes. Down strokes being our downbeat or our crotchet and an up stroke being an offbeat quaver beat. So first thing that I'd like you guys to do is grab your G chord, check that everything's placed correctly and what we're going to count to is four per measure. So we're going to do one strum on beat one of the measure. On beat four that's when you want to make the transition to the next chord. So our chord progression we're going to use to practice our whole note strum pattern is going to be G for two measures. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Then we're going to change to E minor. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Then C. One, two, three, four for one measure. Then D for one measure. Back to G, two, three, So, what we want to focus on is when we do a whole note strum pattern or a semi breathe, it equates to four beats we're trying to let this chord ring out for. Now, what most guitarists will do subconsciously is they will change roughly around beat four or halfway through beat four. If you watch my left hand, you'll notice I'm changing before the start of beat one in the next measure. So I'll play the chord progression again. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, change. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, change. One, two, three, change. One, two, three, change. One, two, three, four, one, two. Three, four. So once you're feeling confident with your changes, we'll move on to what we call a crotchet strum, or four strums per measure. So the crotchet strum pattern sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you've got the hang of the semi breathe strum or the whole note strum and you're getting the hang of your crotchet or quarter note strums. The next thing to implement and try is our combination of quarters and eighth note strum patterns. Now a common strum pattern that you'll hear on multiple records and heaps of guitarists use this live playing cover gigs, playing original gigs, is the down, down, up, up, down pattern which sounds like this. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. That rhythm is one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Now that rhythm's quite tricky straight away. 
So there's one step before getting to that pattern. You want to do this rhythm first, which is one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. With your right hand, you're going to be going down, down, up, down, up, down. Down, down, up, down, up, down. Down. So once you've got the hang of that rhythm, you can then move on to what I call the down, down, up, up, down rhythm. There's two ways of approaching this rhythm. You'll see some guitarists will follow through on beat three and miss the strings and then come up with that upstroke off the beat of three, which looks like this. Down, down, up, up, down. One other really important thing is to verbalize what you practice. This actually helps you internalize exactly what you're doing. Whenever I'm strumming a rhythm or I'm counting a rhythm, I say it out loud. Whether you want to say the down, down, ups, or you actually want to count the rhythm in terms of one, two, and three, and four, or down, down, up, up, down, that's going to help you internalize the rhythms. You have two options with this rhythm. You can do what I call a ghost strum on three, or you can hold your guitar down at the bottom like this. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and, and four. One, two, and, and four. How I verbalize practicing this rhythm and how I've made students practice it in the past is I'll make them verbalize a ghost strum. So on three, they're going to say ghost and they're going to focus on avoiding the strings like this. Down, down, up, ghost, up, down. Down, down, up, ghost, up, down. So let's try that rhythm with the whole chord progression. Our two bars of G, our two bars of E minor, one bar of C, one bar of D, and two bars of G. So we have this after four. One, two, three, four. And down, down, up, ghost, up, down. 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 Down. Ghost up, down, 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 up, ghost up, down, 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 up, ghost up, down. Congratulations, you're now strumming the guitar. If you haven't, please like and subscribe my channel. I've noticed about 75% of my viewers are watching my content but aren't yet subscribers, so please subscribe. And I look forward to creating more content that you guys enjoy. If you've got any suggestions, please comment below. Anyway, happy picking, guys. Thanks.